What if we could leave our solar system in search of a new world, either by the necessity of having to escape or just the pure pursuit of exploration and knowledge? If we were to ever set our sights into the great unknown and find a new solar system to inhabit, which star would we choose? Well, the simplest answer is usually correct, so we head for the closest one, and that is Proxima Centauri in the triple stellar solar system of Alpha Centauri. And through incredible fortune, we found that Proxima supports at least one Earth-like planet in the Goldilocks zone, Planet B. This is our escape route, or our ultimate journey into the final frontier. Depends on the way things go in the future. This will make colonizing Mars look like child's play. But think of the payoff. Establishing humanity in a whole new solar system? Truly extending the light of consciousness to the stars. It's pretty heavy. So today, let's talk about the Alpha Centauri system and our potential new home on Proxima Centauri B, our first best option for Earth 2.0. What's it going to look like? What will we build there? And how do we even travel that far to begin with? This is the space race. So the first really cool thing about Alpha Centauri is that it is triple stellar. We get three suns. The core of the system is a binary star Alpha Centauri A and B. They both orbit around one center of mass in relatively close proximity. The two stars orbit each other once every 80 years, and at their closest, they are about the distance between Saturn and our Sun. And at their farthest, they are about the same distance between Pluto and our Sun. Proxima then orbits around the binary star at a great distance. It's not totally clear if Proxima is really a permanent member of the system or just a transitory third wheel. Proxima is about half a light year away from the alpha pair out in the boondocks of the system, and therefore it has fairly weak gravitational bond to the system. Proxima orbits alpha A and B twice every million years. The pair of stars that make up the binary are pretty close in size to our own, Alpha Centauri A is about 10% larger than the Sun and 50% brighter. Alpha Centauri B is 10% smaller than our Sun and only half as bright. This binary star creates one of the brightest dots of light in our night sky. Proxima is a different beat altogether. This red dwarf is 7 times smaller than our Sun and shines about 600 times dimmer. It's actually so dim that even though Proxima is the closest star to our planet, we can't see it in the night sky without the aid of a telescope. Proxima is only about 1.5 times the size of planet Jupiter. It is just 4.2 light years away from Earth, which is an unfathomably long distance on the human scale, but on the scale of the galaxy, we are just next door. Now, it's important to say again that we wouldn't go here just for fun. There is countless human lifetimes worth of exploring to be done in our own solar system. Traveling to Proxima Centauri is more than likely going to be done as part of a desperate escape measure from a solar system ending catastrophe. Maybe we discover that a rogue black hole is heading straight for our sun, or a cosmic pulsar is about to blast away the entire system, then we have no choice but to run, and Proxima B is where we would run too. So far, we've only been able to identify four exoplanets around Proxima, but we like Planet B because it sits in the Goldilocks zone. That means we believe that the temperature will be just right to allow for liquid water to exist, and water is the solvent of life. Everywhere on Earth that we find liquid water, we also find life. The location of the Goldilocks zone depends very much on the size and power of the star that the planet is orbiting. So, because Proxima is not very large or powerful, the Goldilocks zone is right tight up close to the star. Proxima B is only 7.5 kilometers away from its star. So planet B is eight times closer to Proxima than planet Mercury is to our own sun. So one full rotation around the star, one year on Proxima B, is only going to be about 11 days, which is pretty crazy how that works. The size of Proxima B is pretty close to the Earth, about 1.1 times the radius and about 1.3 times the mass, so it will have stronger gravity than Earth, but not by a crazy amount. Proxima B is believed to be a rocky planet just like our own. It probably looks a lot like Mars because we think the composition is mostly iron oxide, which creates the red hue. 
It also happens to be a much safer place to be than the Earth due to its red dwarf star. The life expectancy for a star like Proxima is going to be about 4 trillion years before it goes supernova, which is comforting. But unfortunately, not everything is looking so great around Proxima b. We have some pretty significant downsides. So it's very likely that planet b is tidally locked to its star. That's the same effect that the Earth has on the moon. The speed of the moon's orbit is the same as its own rotation, so we only ever see one side of it, which is why they call the other one the dark side of the moon. It's not actually dark, we just can't see it from Earth. That means for Proxima b, one side of the planet is constantly facing the star, but the other side is constantly pointed away. So it would actually have a dark side. This isn't great, but it's not a deal breaker on its own. Where things do start to get tricky is when we bring radiation into the mix. Because Proxima b is so close to its star, it is going to get pummeled by a lot of solar wind. The force of solar wind on Proxima b is going to be significantly more powerful than what the Earth receives from our sun. And we don't think that Proxima b has a magnetic field like the Earth does to act as any kind of protection against that force. So any kind of an atmosphere would be blasted away from the rocky planet and that's on a good day. Proxima b also has to contend with a variable star. The red dwarf may be fairly mellow most of the time, but it does have a tendency to flare up with extreme violence. We've watched this happen a few times over the years from Proxima, with the largest recorded flare seeing the star increase in brightness by 1,000 times for a period of several minutes. Imagine that for a second, you're on a nice walk on a summer day, and the sun quickly becomes 1,000 times brighter. We would all be cooked dead by a massive increase in radiation, UV, and infrared light. So that alone puts Proxima b out of the running for an ideal new Earth. Sure, it's warm and nicely lit on the bright side, but you could be annihilated by radiation at any moment. The dark side is a little more appealing then. It's going to take a lot more work to get fixed up, but it would be safe. Okay, so how do we go about colonizing this rock? Because if the Earth is about to be blasted away or crushed into a black hole, then we need to make this work. Step one is going to be hang out in orbit for a while. We start by colonizing the space around Proxima b, and then start making excursions onto the surface for only mining and resource extraction. We're going to need to start off working on the bright side of the planet because we need solar energy for power, but we get underground as fast as possible. We mine iron and other metals from the rocky crust of the planet and then launch it up to our orbital habitat with mass driver systems. These are like giant catapults or rail guns that can put things into orbit with no need for a rocket. Even though Proxima b will have strong gravity, it will have little to no atmosphere to slow down the projectiles as it moves towards orbit. We can source water, oxygen, and nitrogen from asteroids that are nearby, or maybe even ones that we pick up along the way. And then our actual settlement gets built on the dark side of the planet, right in the middle, as safe as possible from the solar flares. We can use our resources to construct a giant orbital mirror system that bounces light from Proxima onto our colony. We can use optical filters on the mirrors to cut radiation from the light, and we can control the position to create periods of day and night with the ability to rotate away during flare events. By concentrating the light, we can actually have our colony on the dark side brighter than the light side of the planet. Here is the million dollar question. How do we actually get to Proxima in the first place? It's 4.2 light years away. That means traveling at the speed of light, which is the fastest thing in the universe and is impossible to even match in speed, it would take four years. For context, the Voyager 1 probe represents the farthest we have ever been able to get a spaceship away from the Earth. In 2012, it exited our solar system and became a part of interstellar space. Going at its current speed, it would take Voyager tens of thousands of years to reach Proxima. The fastest thing we've ever shot into space so far is the Parker Solar Probe. It's expected to reach a top speed of 690,000 kilometers per hour, or 0.064 the speed of light. This would also take tens of thousands of years to reach Proxima. So these aren't going to do. We've got to figure something out. The best idea we have running so far to reach Proxima in our lifetime is with light sails propellant by giant laser beams. 
The idea of light sail is an ultra-thin sheet of ultralight metal that is accelerated by laser radiation pressure fired into it from the Earth, or ideally from the Moon. This idea is being explored in a project called Breakthrough Starshot, which was actually co-founded by the late great Stephen Hawking just before he died. Unfortunately, the surviving founders are not exactly the people you want in charge right now. One is Mark Zuckerberg, we all know who that is, and the other is Yuri Milner, who is a Russian billionaire, which is a situation one might describe as being an oligarch, which is not a type of person that we like right now, so this is a bit awkward. Anyways, regardless of who's funding the whole thing, the idea is pretty cool. Breakthrough Starshot wants to conduct a proof-of-concept experiment by sending nanocraft to Alpha Centauri. These would have a light sail of about 10 square meters and would carry a tiny silicon wafer with onboard instruments called a star chip. The whole nanocraft will only weigh a single gram. Just appreciate how light one gram is. A penny weighs 2.5 grams. When accelerated by lasers from the Earth, that fire energy into the sail, they should quickly get up to a top speed of about 20% the speed of light. At that velocity, it should reach the destination in just 15 to 20 years. Now, the chances of smashing into something along the way are pretty high. So the idea is to fire off 1,000 of these things with the hope that a few will actually make it all the way to our neighboring star system. The one obvious and significant downside to this propulsion method is going to be slowing down. How do you do that? We can't have a laser firing back in the opposite direction. There's an idea that reversing the sail to face the rapidly oncoming binary star might help to reduce speed. It might work a little bit, but either way, it's going to be a very quick flyby if these things can actually make it. The hope is, that at the very least, they can confirm some of our existing theories about the Alpha Centauri system and its planets and stars. Now, can this ever be scaled up to propel a whole crewed spaceship to Proxima? Maybe, but the slowing down thing is really going to have to get figured out. We could always just build a warp drive, right? Using the process of antimatter annihilation, we could get pretty damn close to the speed of light. This isn't just Star Trek theory, this is a real antimatter drive engine. If we collide a particle with an antiparticle, they release an incredible amount of pure energy with nothing left behind as a byproduct. Just half a kilogram of antimatter should accelerate a spaceship to about half the speed of light, which should get us to Proxima in about nine years. It can be made, it is possible, but it is profoundly difficult. They have been able to capture antiparticles at the CERN particle accelerator, but we're talking about the scale of atoms here. It's estimated that creating just one gram of antimatter would cost three times the GDP of the United States, something like $62 trillion. So what do you think? Is Proxima B the inevitable second home for humanity? Would we ever be able to develop the technology required to make all of this happen before we reach a certain doom? I'd like to think so, but let us know in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.